Hey everyone, Mike Miller, Herald Times, joined once again for another season of basketball action. Columnist Jeremy Price. Uh, what's that? What's that going on? <laughs> that was really awkward. <laughs> uh, hey, it's hey, it's the exhibition. It's an exhibition for us too, folks. It's we're all we're all getting our tune-ups in here on this November first evening in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, not as awkward as that. Um, taking care of uh, Southern Indiana. By a lot to a little. Uh, but we're, I can't even find the score on this box score. It's uh, <laughs> I really can't. It was 96 to Yes. Sure. Um, some good, some bad, as Archie Miller put it. Certainly the case. Um, <clears throat> start any number of places. What do you think? I'll tell you what. It's not like we haven't done scoop talk with, with football. <laughs> this is not like it's been many months. This is off to a rousing start, though. Um, we can start with some of the good and some of the bad. Well, I, I think when you start with the good, you start with Rob Finnessy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's, he, he was the guy that stood out in this game tonight and by all accounts uh, stood out fairly well in the closed scrimmage against Loyola on Sunday as well. Uh, you know, I think the thought going into this season was that maybe Indiana would ease him into that point guard mm-hmm. role. A lot of talk about being the point guard of the future. I'm not sure that he's not the point guard of now. I agree. Uh Obviously, Devontae Green's going to have some say in that when he gets healthy and gets back in it again. And Indiana's going to need some depth at that point guard spot. Uh, Al Durham played some limited minutes tonight, but it looks like he's dealing with a little bit of uh, injury issues as well, as it, along with Devontae. So, but uh, Finnessy looks good. I mean, he looks, looks everything that you both ends of the court want a guy too. to be. Yeah. I mean, it's not just all, I mean, you saw him on defense, too. I mean, both ends of the court right now, he looks, he looks game ready, uh, both physically and the way he played in the game. Um, and like you said, depth I think is going to be important because you can. Th- this Indiana team I think is going to be able to mix and match a lot, especially early in the early in the season. And I think even with Durham, you can kind of have like a you can have a longer lineup on the floor mm-hmm. as we saw early in this game. We have uh, Durham and, and, and Langford, and I think you saw Zach McRoberts in that particular lineup. You can have a longer, bigger guard lineup, um, and, and certainly having options at a position where Indiana just hasn't really been very steady, hasn't been very productive at least the past couple of years uh, would, would go a long way. And I think with Finnessy too is this isn't a case where. You look at it as he's overwhelming the opposition athletically necessarily, although he certainly does have the athletic skills, Mm -hmm. but he's not trying to do too much. He's not doing things that he would only be able to do against a Division II type of opponent. He's playing very much within himself and under control, but he's still doing the things he needs to do both Mm -hmm. offensively and defensively with this team. And like you mentioned, basically when you put a lineup out there where Finnessy's your smallest guy, and he's still a pretty strong guy at that point guard spot, and the rest of the other four guys around him, all are you know six four six five and above with length quickness. Uh, I think that's where the potential defensively for this team comes in, which was kind of the other thing, or the thing that I took away from Archie's post game press conference is he kind of slipped a little. I think this team can be pretty good defensively in there, and for a, a coach that typically isn't prone to a lot of overt praise and and hyperbole, uh, I think that's an important line to keep in mind uh, that for a guy that had three teams that were in the top 70 in defensive efficiency at Dayton two that were I think 30 31 or 32 and 15 yep at times uh, there 15, yeah, yeah uh, he knows a good defensive team when he sees one so I think that's worth taking to heart with this team it's it's both uh, you know you, we've talked so much about uh, you know some of the lineups and the, and the versatility you could see offensively but really you also see the versatility, especially the length defensively, and I think you saw it in the first half today. I mean, Romeo Langford had what three steals in, in the or three steals in the first five minutes. Um, other guys were getting after it. Um, I mean, granted, it's an exhibition against a Division Two opponent, but again, you could see the length, and, and you could see how this again with, with some of those lines they were putting out there, how that length could translate, you know, down the line. Definitely, when their minds, hearts, bodies are into it. Second half today was kind of a good example, uh, sort of that. Focus waned a little bit in the second half. I mean, to a certain extent, Southern Indiana was also making some shots that they weren't making in the first half, including, I think, a banked three. They also had one that hit off the back rim, popped up in the air, and fell through Mm -hmm. somehow. So they got got a couple fortunate bounces in that second half, which is going to happen. And obviously, IU in the second half with Durham not playing there. Johnny Jager wound up playing a a good portion of that second half at the point when Finnessy wasn't in the game. Uh, you know, a lot of guys saw minutes in that second half, so I don't think it was surprising to see that defense fall off. But I think when you're talking the top seven, eight in the rotation, and, you know, obviously we didn't see some of those guys tonight with uh, Devontae Green not playing, Jerome Hunter didn't play, Race Thompson didn't play. 
three guys that you expect to be in that rotation, and I think all three of those guys can be very good defensively as well. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't put too much stock in the second half. But at the same time, you think back a year ago, the two exhibition games, Indiana looked pretty good defensively. I think they gave up uh, 6 of 25 in one game and 8 of 22 in the other from three. Mm -hmm. And then uh, (laughs) the season opener against Indiana Indiana State State happened. That didn't go so well. So uh, if nothing else, Archie Miller has that to fall back on and say, don't start feeling fat and sassy just because you had a couple nice exhibition games uh there's tougher things ahead and you're gonna have to maintain that focus this year i think we kind of saw some of the things that archie miller's alluded to um and again like he said i mean he's a guy that what he says he means and and i think what we've seen through the preseason at least the past month is he said he's been pretty consistent saying you know that the defense is ahead of the offense Mm -hmm. and that certainly looked to be the case uh you know for large chunks of tonight um, you know, back to the offense, you know, shooting-wise, this was a very poor three-point shooting team, a very poor uh, team shooting at the line last year. Um, you know, didn't really kick it into gear, at least from the perimeter until the second half, at which point you saw Demise Anderson really. Demise Anderson and Evan Fitzner uh, particularly, uh, two guys who were able to light it up from, from deep. I think Demise Anderson led everyone scoring 14 points, hit, what, uh, four three-pointers. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's a niche that Indiana could really use. I mean, we'll see how it really materializes in the future and whether he kind of finds himself in that rotation of eight, nine guys. But um, shooting off the bench could be something that, I mean, it, it's, it is something that Indiana needs, and he's certainly a guy that, while the rest of his game really fills out, and really I, that's kind of what he is right now is just a shooter. He's a big guy. He's got some upside, but right now he's more of a shooter than anything else. That could be a role for him or someone else to occupy moving forward. Yeah, I think with Demise Anderson, uh, until he kind of finds his footing, right now he's he's sort of a one-dimensional player. Yeah. And when the shot's going down, you can have him on the floor. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, not so much. But I think it's worth noting that when Indiana did get rolling with the three-point shot in the second half, what that came after was after a concerted effort to get the ball inside to start the second half. Yeah. You had three quick buckets from Juwan Morgan. Deron Davis came in and got two or three buckets down low in a row. Uh, really, that concentrated effort to get the ball into the post really opened up that perimeter game, which I don't think is any surprise for this team. And, and when they did shoot those three-pointers, all of a sudden they weren't contested looks. They were wide-open looks and, and looks for, by and large, guys that can make those shots. Mm-hmm. Zach McRoberts had a couple in a row. You know, no hesitation, shot with confidence, which has not really the, been the norm for him, but something I think Archie Miller feels like he's capable of doing and, and trying to get him to do. So uh, Evan Fitzner, like you mentioned, Demise Anderson, these are all guys that are good shooters and capable shooters, and you put them in good rhythm situations mm-hmm. and wide open situations, there's no reason they can't knock those down. That's what it's going to have to be, I think, just finding those rhythms and creating the quality opportunities. Throughout. It's just not a team that you look at and say, well, it's, it's instant – Instant firepower, especially from the shooting perspective, from shooting three pointers like we've seen in years past. But again, you have you know you get in, you get the drive and kick situations. You maybe get Evan Fitzner as a trailing four, you know, in transition. You have some of those opportunities to take advantage of. And we saw in in bits and pieces here tonight, you know, how that can kind of develop and materialize for this team. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a night where you saw glimpses of all the things that this team could be, but you also saw that there are a lot of holes to fill, a lot yeah. of things to be figured out, and and obviously a lot of players that we didn't see. Uh, yet to be factored into this equation but what you see is there there is some diversity and some options with this team uh, which will give it I think more than one way to win a game this year and as we've learned there's more than one way to open a scoop talk so <laughs> we're going to close the one way we do know how thank you for watching and we'll be back Tuesday night 6 30 start I believe against Chicago State the second season under Archie Miller will get underway then and uh, we'll be here to follow along so we'll do it for real do it for real this didn't count no we will be this deleting practice. this. Yes. It's an exhibition scoop talk. This didn't count. Stop watching. <laughs>